All right, guys, welcome back. So another profession video. Now we're going to talk about engineering in RAF and is it good? Who should be it? What can you make? And this is going to sound like a really biased video and it will. I, I can't help it because I love engineering. Like I personally would have engineering on every character in RAF if I could. Healers included, tanks included, although tanks less benefit, I would say. There's, there's a couple of nice things for tanks, but ultimately they probably get the least value out of engineering. But it's all the little quality of life stuff, that, quality of life items that you get and things that you can do with it because even the moat extractor is still a thing. So if you're looking forward to finding out everything about engineering in Wrath of the Lich King, then hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, ring the bell for notifications and let's crack on. Now, when it comes to engineering, you've still got all the typical things that you would expect. So you can still make explosives. There is still a difference between goblin and gnomish, for example. To use the global thermal sapper charges, you do need to be goblin engineer, but they're incredibly cheap to make. And as you can see here, because they've got a five minute cooldown, you'll also use saronite bombs, which come in a box of bombs, which are still on a minute cooldown. But once you've used your initial sapper charge, then you can start throwing bombs every minute instead. So you're going to want to be using both. So this is just flat out extra damage but you already know that engineers sapper charges we all know that's a thing so what else do we get obviously you still get your engineering goggles which are really strong you can use them at level 72 if you've got the engineering skill to be able to do so this primarily will be seen more on alts i would say you know getting it at 72 the majority of us are gonna have to wait till 80 on mains to be able to even get the materials to be able to make one but every class and spec gets their engineer head i'll flash some up on screen now but you know whatever spec you play there's normally a useful head i say that but actually for resto druid there isn't a useful head so there might be other specs where they're a little bit poor as well you can make arrows and bullets for your hunters so if you're a hunter with engineering you'll be making your own ammunition before we get onto the big ones which is pve additions you know like extra cooldowns and more damage and stuff like that let's just talk about some of the cool devices that you can make which are just going to add quality of life or just they're just nice they're just cool to have so in devices you can make jeeves this does require farming and you're probably not going to be able to obtain it until epic gems are introduced which they won't be in phase one but jeeves acts as a personal bank you can buy reagents from him and it's extremely expensive to make but if you're going to be an engineer and you haven't already got the field repair bot schematic and the field repair bot 110 g you're going to want to get both of those in classic tbc now so you've got them ready scrap bot construction kit will come from a quest which i'll show you that shortly when we're actually talking about where you can go and farm the jeeves recipe and where you can actually make a lot of gold by engineering mobs you can still make scopes as well useful scopes for hunters another really nice one is gnomish army knife which basically acts as every single tool or accessory such as arc light spanners flint and tinder micro adjuster mining pick skinning knife you know absolutely everything all rolled into one but what's nice about this is it also acts as jumper cables if you're a hunter a rogue a warrior someone who can't res but you're an engineer you've actually got an out of combat chance of being able to res someone once every 30 minutes using something that would be in your bag anyway you know you would probably carry this around everywhere anyway because it only takes up one slot but covers all of your crafted needs. Now you can use it as a potential res as well. Moly should be the first thing every engineer makes, because as you can see, I've got one in my bag here. Absolutely want to be able to pop a mailbox down every two hours. I mean, come on. You can still make mana injection kits just to save bag space or healing injection kits, if that's your thing. I've not even got all of the recipes. There's ones which people are obviously going to go on about, which is like the Meccano hog. If you're an engineer, you're going to probably want to make this mount, obviously at the beginning of the expansion, especially how I'm playing at the moment, which is a, a fresh server having the gold to be able to do that is like sort of not in reach for me at the moment but in a classic version of wrath of the lich king where you're taking in gold cap characters from tbc i'm sure you're gonna have the mount in no time you can obviously still make good guns and stuff like that for hunters or whoever wants to use a gun but let's talk about the biggie and i say the biggie because it's the tinkers now when it comes to the tinkers it works very uniquely in comparison to tbc so you attach these to your items they don't stack with enchant so it will replace an enchant but they're normally very very useful so if we try take nitro boots for example nitro boots permanently attaches overpowered nitro boosts to a pair of boots increasing your crit rating by 24 and allowing you to greatly increase your run speed for five seconds and it's got a three minute cooldown now do bear in mind this can sometimes go wrong and blast you up in the sky and then you're going to parachute back down that can be really annoying but it doesn't happen that often and the fact that you're getting a 24 crit enchant on your boots and the movement speed you're going to save gold by not ever ever having to enchant your boots which as you can see here moves incredibly quick 
So on top of this, you could also make hand-mounted pyro rockets, which permanently attaches a hand-mounted pyro rocket launcher to your gloves, allowing a skilled engineer to deal 1654 to 2020 fire damage to an enemy at long range. This rocket can be fired once every 45 seconds, so you could see that being useful for a tank, just for range pulling. If you wanted to fire a rocket at one, throw your shield at another, or whatever you want to do, you know, you could see it being useful for certain classes. Certainly not for DPS, because what you're going to be using as a DPS is hyperspeed accelerators, which permanently attaches hyperspeed accelerators to a pair of gloves, allowing a skilled engineer to increase their haste rating by 340 for 12 seconds. Now, this is massive, and I say it's massive because if we look at a, a two 200 eye level piece of gear or we even take the, the engineering goggles themselves as an example the secondary stat increase of 43 crit rating and this is going to give 340 on use for 12 seconds every minute it's the equivalent of using about eight items worth of worth of secondary stats again you know seven to eight items if you were to take seven to eight of your items and combine the secondary stat that you're going to get from them you can get all of those again once a minute just from enchanting your gloves with hyperspeed accelerators. Now, this is huge, and it lines up, because it's only a minute cooldown, it lines up with uh, lots of other things. You know, so as a Feral Druid, for example, using Tiger's Fury, which is a 30-second cooldown, as long as you haven't got the four-piece tier set, every other Tiger's Fury you use, you just have this bound to it, obviously. So every other Tiger's Fury, you're going to get 340 haste rating on top of getting the extra energy. And I'm sure there's lots of other classes that have got one-minute cooldowns, two-minute cooldowns, you know, so you can just have it lining up nicely with lots of things and haste you know, 340 haste it's a lot this is why it's really difficult when it comes to engineering to be able to say well it gives this amount of dps because it will give a different amount of dps to each different class on top of are you using your sappers are you using bombs on cooldown you know you add all that together and the actual gain that you're going to get i would say is better than anything else when i said as a tank there are useful bits you can get armor webbing for your gloves instead of the hyperspeed accelerators or the rocket launcher which basically give you 885 armor which is huge 885 armor is obviously massive so that can be useful and then the only other one i really want to talk about is the flex weave underlay which increases agility by 23 so you get a 23 agility enchant on your cloak but it also gives you a parachute which you can see here there is a frag belt, but it actually throws a cobalt frag bomb. So this is quite useless in the grand scheme of things because you're going to be wanting to use Saronite bombs because they do more damage. Uh, if you're a spellcaster, obviously you do get your own version of the parachute cloak and it will give you 27 spell power you also get this teleporter which i absolutely love i've not made it yet again just because all i'm restricted by at the moment is how much gold i've got otherwise i would absolutely have it because i love being able to teleport all over the place all around the world as quickly as possible and you can make the north end teleporter which the north end teleporter has got a four hour cooldown but it creates an unstable wormhole the engineer can use to travel around north end so you basically pick which zone you want to teleport to you can also make a couple of trinkets so noise machine early on these will be quite nice you know depending on your eye level and stuff but 167 eye level trinkets a 63 spell power and you get a chance of absorbing some damage and then you've also got an 81 stamina trinket and a chance to increase your attack power when you're hit. Neither of those are particularly strong, you know, as in they're okay. But if you had nothing better, you'd probably make them or you probably will make them just while you're leveling your engineering. But they're, they're not great. They're nothing to get excited about. Like I say, the big ones when it comes to engineering is gold potential. So how much gold you can make, which we're going to get onto in a minute. And the tinkers, honestly, they're the, they're the biggest part. So like I mentioned, moat extracting is still a thing. And it's quite good because you get a mix of, depending on what cloud you actually extract, you get a mix of, even as a moat extracted, they're not moats, you're getting crystallized elements, if you like. So, you know, some of them you might get fire and water. Some of them you might just get fire. Some you might just get water. But ultimately, they're the main ones that you're going to be getting. I'm going to do a lot more digging in into moat extracting i've only done a few routes around stuff like dragon blight shoulders are shoulders are seems like the best place to get steam clouds which do give you fire and water at the same time you get cinder clouds and arctic clouds now the cinder clouds as you would expect give you fire fire moats or fire crystallized fire and arctic clouds as you can expect give you water or air so one or the other not both at the same time I will be doing an in-depth moat extractor sort of routes for each zone and stuff like that, but I need to do a lot more of it myself first. So I'm currently actually away from my PC editing this video on the iPad. And whilst editing, I noticed one big thing I didn't mention. So the moat extractor, you don't need to use goggles anymore. Where in TBC, you need goggles on so you can see, you know, on the mini map, you get the little icon to show that there's a gas cloud. As long as you've got this moat extractor, I'll put it up there. 
in your bag, then you're fine. You can see everything on the map. And then the other gold potential method is actually in Storm Peaks. All around here at the Terrace of the Makers, you've got these little gnomes on their Meccano striders. Now, killing these and engineering them is actually where you get the Jeeves recipe from. But like you'll see, they're extremely easy to kill. They die in absolutely no time. And then you can engineer them and they drop lots of white items that you can vendor. But you can kill so many of these at the same time, even as a feral druid. So I can literally pull a two from over here, pull two in from the other side. And then you can literally just, once all of these are dead, engineer all of them. And you'll get important engineering materials materials as well what you'll actually need for your tinkers so for example we just got two volatile blasting triggers from one and then we got another three volatile blasting triggers from another so that's five volatile blasting triggers and lots and lots of white items to vendor and they obviously drop greens blues whatever else if you're lucky so then if we go to tinkers you can see volatile blasting triggers i just got five from like a couple of seconds worth of you know killing mobs and you need these for your nitro boots enchant. So you'll even be able to probably sell these for a reasonable amount of gold on the auction house. And you'll get loads of them just farming at this spot. And like I say, you're going to want to farm at this spot to get the Jeeves recipe anyway. But this is a great way to not have to waste loads of materials on making volatile blasting triggers. Sorry, I'm just being attacked. Because to make volatile blasting triggers, it's three cobalt ore and one crystallized water. So why waste all of the materials on making volatile blasting triggers when you can literally just come over here kill a few packs and you'll get more of these volatile blasting triggers in a quicker time than if you was to go around mining now another thing worth noting here is they also drop relic of Alduar. now relic of Alduars will sell extremely well throughout the entire expansion because these are not needed because you can just do dailies but sons of hodir where you get your shoulder in chance these can be handed in as a repeatable hand in to get reputation and you need about a thousand of these roughly let's say to get to exalted so people will be buying these all the time so you're going to be getting your engineering mats greens that drop so maybe you're enchanting engineering you can de the stuff or just vendor them whatever sell them on the auction house and you're going to be getting relics of Alduar, which are always going to sell so engineering you know if you take in this sort of area where you can farm and engineer mobs on top of being able to moat extract which actually when i first landed here there was a, a cloud just an arctic cloud waiting for me to extract so running around here killing and moat extracting at the same time i know they're saying a gold farming guide but just to give you an example engineering can also be extremely lucrative so look that's about where i want to leave it we've covered most of the stuff mount gold potential what you're going to use in terms of dps what you know benefits you get as a healer or a tank you know absolutely i would say everything you really need to know as well as all the extra devices and stuff we spoke about as well so if you found this useful please do make sure you like and subscribe ring the bell for notifications and i'll see you on the next one